A warm welcome as we gather for worship on this, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Just a couple of things to draw to your attention. A reminder that Vacation Bible School is next week or the week after next, starting August 1st, uh, from Sunday through Thursday, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. So if you have young people between basically four to four years old to fifth grade, you're welcome to send them. Or if you have neighbor kids or friends' kids or grandkids or whatever kind of kids you got, bring them on over and Jennifer and gang will take care of them for a couple hours, uh, for a couple evenings. So that's coming up. Um, Brenda, you wanted to say something. You can use that mic if you want. So we still need school supplies for our backpack program, back to school. Uh, we're a little bit low, as I understand, uh, from, as opposed to other years. I think it's coming in pretty slow. Uh, they're going to start uh, putting backpacks together August 2nd. So anything that you could buy would be really greatly appreciated. Specifically what they need now is high school notebook paper. So that could either be the loose leaf, uh, like the college bound or the wide rule, and they don't care. It could be the spiral notebooks, or it could be the kind where you just tear it out. Uh, pencils and crayons. I could not believe they needed crayons. Usually they have tons of crayons. This year they don't. So if you already have something purchased, don't worry about it. If it isn't one of those items, we can always still use it. But if everybody brings this one thing, a pack of pencils, a, you know, one pack of crayons, that would really help. So thank you for all you've done in the past, and we hope to do just as well this year. Thank you. And if you don't want to go shopping but want to provide financial assistance, you can also write a check and say, go shopping Brenda. Because I know you and Jen are going next week. Yes. Okay. So they're going shopping. We do have some money in the office, I know, for you. And I think the local mission is going to put some money toward it. So you can buy crayons. 6,000 crayons with $250 gift card or something. They always like that when you walk out of all that stuff. So that's that coming up. Um, August 1st is the beginning of, the, uh, of our internship year when Vicar Beauvais will join us for a year of uh, participating in life of the congregation as she prepares for ordination two years down the road. And so we look forward to having her here. We will do the formal welcome on the 5th of August in this service. We'll do the 1st of August at the Sunday morning services. And then on a sad note, uh, last Saturday morning, our uh, uh, member of the congregation, Sherry Gallagher, passed away. At the age of 78, Sherry's the mother of Lori, Garia, and Lane, and the sister of Dale in the congregation, and the grandmother of lots of people. So her memorial service is here at the church on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Visitation is at Squires on Friday from 2 until 8. So we remember that family in our prayers as they mourn her loss and as we gather to celebrate her life on Saturday. With that, let's rise and begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done, and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Psalm 145. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. Shall 
that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Shalashah, bringing food from the first fruits to Eliza, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Eliza said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from Ephesians. For this season I bow my knee before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power and thought and with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because the saw, he saw the, they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, 
he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. My mother-in-law loved to entertain. She loved to have people come over to her house. They would have parties, they would have bridge, and they'd play games and all that kind of stuff. She, she would welcome us to come for Thanksgiving and any other time we might show up. And once a year, they had what was called the Christmas coffee. It was at the beginning of December, and they had been doing it for about 50 years. I think shortly after they married, they started doing it. My father-in-law, I think, wanted to retire from the Christmas coffee much earlier than my mother-in-law did. But the thing that my mother-in-law always said, no matter what the event, no matter how much she prepared, she was always worried there would not be enough, that there wouldn't be enough food for all the people who were coming. Now, I have to tell you that when we would go there for Thanksgiving, there would probably be about 15 of us after all the grandkids were kind of grown up, and we always had leftovers to take home. But Mother was always sure there would not be enough. I'm not sure that my mother-in-law was unique in that approach to food. I think there is a certain generation in which that was always the concern. A younger generation just calls out for more pizza if they start running out. But mother had this idea, not enough. Not enough is an image that seems to run through scripture as well. When human beings look at their situation and wonder if there was going to be enough or anything at all. John mentions the Passover, which reminds us that when Israel came out of Egypt, they had traveled for a while, and they may have taken a little bit along. But shortly after they crossed the Red Sea, they started to grumble to Moses because there wasn't a lot of food out in the wilderness. The 7-Elevens hadn't shown up yet. And started to complain that they were going to die out here because there was no food. They didn't see the possibilities. They didn't trust that God would provide. But they simply didn't see much. When the man from Baal Shalal came with his offering to Elijah. Elijah's servant said, this is not enough for a hundred people. How could we possibly? And when Jesus says the crowd should sit down and turns to the disciples and says, how are you going to handle this one? Philip first says, you know, six months wages wouldn't get a little bit for everybody. And then even when Andrew finds a little boy with his five barley loaves and two fish, how is this going to satisfy? There's just not enough. It's an approach that I think many of us take to situations. We look at how little is there as opposed to the possibilities. We have a model of what I call scarcity thinking. We're going to run out. We're not going to have enough. It's going to, it's going to just fail us. But God seems to have a different perspective. God seems to always find enough and then more than enough, even when we forget. And so the Israelites, there in the wilderness, when they complain that there's no food, God says, okay, manna it is. And every morning, manna shows up. Manna shows up, more than enough for everyone to eat. Well, actually, no. Manna shows up, and everyone has enough to eat. When they try to hoard it, the worms come and say, you know, God says, I'll take care of you in the morning. Don't put it away for the night. And when Elisha sets it out before the people, there's plenty and there's leftovers. And when Jesus tells the people to sit down, he takes the five barley loaves, the two fish, blesses them, gives thanks to God for them, and there are leftovers. God seems to find a way to take what we see as limited and make sure there's plenty for everyone. Moses required a bit of divine intervention. Elisha needed the word of God. But Jesus, well, Jesus is who Jesus is. 
And so he's simply able to make happen what needs to happen, simply able to provide for the people who are before him. Now, the people get really excited because this is a pretty cool thing to have a guy show up, take a little bit of food, and everybody gets fed. And so they think he's the prophet, and Jesus says, oh, they're going to make me king so that I can provide food. But Jesus is way more than that, of course. And so, in order to make sure that we understand that, John has Jesus walk across water. And the disciples are reminded that perhaps Jesus is God in the flesh among them to make sure that there is plenty. Abundance is what God provides. Abundance is how God provides for us. God provides all that we need and then some so that we can live out of gratitude for what God provides for us rather than out of fear that there will not be enough. And once we begin to open up and to give what we have, to share what we have with others, to become abundant livers, people giving away that which we have received, we will discover that God continues to provide over and over and over again. That we can't outgive God. That we simply cannot stop God from being abundant in all that he gives. For if we remember, God gave the most precious thing, his own son, so that we might be set free from our fear of scarcity so that we might recognize the abundant love of God, which draws us to God's self and enables us to become people who share, give, and live out of an abundance of delight that God has blessed so that we might too. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.
recited in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations and our partners, the congregation at Trinity in Battle Creek and their pastor, Sherston Sullivan. Karen Anderson, a healthcare professional in Santiago, Chile, and the congregation of Christ the King in Gladwin and their pastor, Emily Olson. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Bless too the ministries of this church, including those of Pastor Teich and Norma, as well as those who will be serving our youth at Vacation Bible School. Lord, in your mercy, we, play, we pray for creation. Send rains to land experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat and ravaging fires. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. And guide our local farmers and gardeners in their labors to bring forth the fruits of their lands. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption. Instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of your common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, especially those on our prayer list and those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those gathered here tonight and all our members, including Jessica Reed, Madeline Cadence and Brinley, Raquel Reed and Marion, Stu and Linda Reed, Carl Reinhardt, Christiana Richards, Mike and Aaron Riley with Allison and Aubrey. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the lives and gifts of those who have died. As you sustain them through all their days, so dwell in, the, in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Jesus, bread of life, you have sent, set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains and grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit, you called us to the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation, we remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Holy God, holy and merciful and holy and compassionate, send upon us in this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food, Nourish in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb. Through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one with the Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take and eat them in remembrance that Christ died for your sins. Come now, the table is prepared.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nurtured us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. God, my feet, while I...